How have the expressions irresponsible fathers and deadbeat dads come into such regular parlance? Is it really just about the fathers? Why hasn't irresponsible mothers, toxic women and lying, cheating mums come into regular use? There are far more irresponsible mothers out there than irresponsible fathers. So in terms of saying that you have good fathers and bad fathers, mm. if you like, the fact that she had the child does not, does not say that, yes, I think this man was worth having a child with. Not necessarily. It, it might do. There may be a situation where a woman particularly chooses her life partner because she thinks, you know, this is the man I want to be the father of my children. You hear women saying that. So in some cases it may be. But in other cases it might not be at all. I think they want a child and um, it, it, it doesn't matter. I think the important thing to distinguish then is between fatherhood as a status and fathering as a practice, as an activity. You can say that somebody is a, uh, has the status of being the father, but that's quite different from actually the activity of fathering. And they can be very different. Somebody, and you, you can have the status of being a father, it doesn't mean you're going to be a good father. Women have always had the power to decide childbirth, whether they're going to have a child or not. That's a huge power. I mean, that's the, you could almost say it's one of the most powerful things in society. And women have that. Women can decide whether or not a man becomes a father. And fatherhood for me would change my life. Therefore, women have the power to completely change my life on a whim. A man is powerless when it comes to whether or not he's going to have a son or daughter. It's a female power in, in society. It's throughout history that perhaps is one of the, it's one of the biggest powers that you can have. And it is a female power. But feminism, once again, has been there to cover up this fact. It's essential for feminism that men feel equally responsible for making babies, because this excuses women their complete failure to exercise due care in when and with whom they have children. With such control over the process, there are simply no excuses for mothers to have children with men who have not agreed to be fathers. Having sex is not an agreement to fatherhood, and men should not be forced into fatherhood any more than a woman should be forced into motherhood. It's not fair that, that women have complete power over whether a father or whether a man becomes a father um, and that's the bottom line a woman has control over whether a man becomes a father it's not fair but it's 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 the way of the world so what you do is you try and protect the father as much as possible you try and give him as much as many rights as possible um, at the, but right now what we seem to be doing is simply punishing a man who doesn't want to become a father who a woman has made a father and that doesn't seem right to me, that you punish him. He should be protected, not punished. If it was a one night stand, if it was a casual thing, what would go through your mind when you found out that she was pregnant? Shit. <laughs> what she was thinking, because I tell I wasn't obviously not in love with her, she was in love with me. How, how are we gonna bring up a child in that environment? How, how, how's this actually gonna work? I'd want to know what the, um, what the motivations of, of the mother was? Is it just that she's obsessed with having a child? I mean, not that I can do anything about it anyway, but it, it sounds incredibly unhealthy. Any woman who wants a child without it being within a relationship has, I think, an unhealthy obsession with having a child regardless of anything else. It may simply be a, a, you know, a biological clock ticking down, but that's an animal instinct. And we are human beings, and you control that. And if you're going to have, if you can't give a future to this child, especially, and you know, come with old fashioned, but a future within a relationship, the father and the mother. And I'm, you know, I came from a single parent family, so um, I'm not knocking that either. It's, it's, it's the way it is nowadays. But if you can't actually plan that, there is a problem there. There is something psychological going on. Um, where you're being incredibly selfish because you're wanting, you, you're wanting to have a, a child with no concern as to the child or, to, or as to the father. And that's, um, that's I would consider, almost a, a psychopathic problem. By bearing unwanted children, she's inflicting damage on absolutely everyone. The child, the father, and even strangers who might one day have to deal with crimes committed by her fatherless, maladjusted child. It's basically an assault on society. And yet, society assists her in this crime.
If a woman worked in a bank and gave a customer a loan of even one pound without knowing a surname, she would get the sack for gross negligence. Yet many women get themselves pregnant after a night out in town without knowing the surname of the father. Joy didn't remember much about the boy's real father, except that he drove a Ford. Is this for me, Linda? Uh, no, I was just writing what my name would be if I married Raul. It, it just says Linda. I don't know his last name. <laughs> This is a female empowerment, or girl power, that feminism has brought us. Women who are quite happy to get themselves pregnant without a second thought for anybody except themselves. And women are doing this in ever greater numbers. If you, at the end of making this video, want to go up to Cardiff and see the social services up there, they'll take you. There are acres and acres and acres of council flats, I mean, thousands of just single women with children. That's the future. There's another one in Bristol. They're all over the place. Nobody sees them, nobody knows about it. But largely, there are no men on those estates, just single parents and mothers. And you see that increasing? Yeah, it is increasing. I know a guy whose girlfriend got herself pregnant by him, but they split up before she told him. She then calls him up to say she's pregnant and she's going to have the baby. What kind of woman wants to have something as life-changing as a baby with a man she didn't even like enough to go out with. Unfortunately, she's not at all unusual. He made the decision to take up his responsibilities in full, despite resistance from the mother. What kind of nobility does the man have in deciding to suck it up and take on fatherhood like this? How many millions of men are doing the same thing right now? Why do women who have 100% control of their fertility decide to have children with men who don't want to be fathers? This is the crux of the matter and possibly the single leading cause of fatherlessness. Too many women are having children with obviously unsuitable men, and then blaming the men for being unsuitable. And society follows suit. But it's not meant to be this way. People are biologically programmed to make decent choices of partner material. Women, women have no, no trouble finding someone willing to inseminate them. Um, and given that, they, they have the ability to um, exercise choice over who, uh, who it is they're going to uh, have kids with. And when you do that, you, ex you expect them to go for either uh, uh, good genes or good um, parenting ability, or good ability to provide uh, resources. What forces today are preventing women from making even basic sensible choices in who inseminates them, when even cave women chose more suitable partners? Imagine a young man forced into fatherhood by some woman he had sex with in the back of a car. He may not have finished studying or decided on a career, and yet she decides that he'll be a father. He's not ready, he doesn't want it, he can't afford it, he's not capable of fatherhood, but she makes it happen anyway. She's decided to enslave him and has taken away all his choices while she enforces hers. Can we honestly be surprised if he wants nothing to do with her? Why do we see these fathers as irresponsible rather than escaping enslavement? Typical excuses for these women are that she's misguided. She's ignorant, young, foolish, it was an accident. In the final analysis, Producing a child unwanted by the father is not an accident, and it can't be excused as one. What it is, is female violence, uniquely female violence, at its worst. And society gives this female violence its full support. Teenage mums of all ages will soon be offered up to £5,000 worth of childcare grants to help them back into education or training. I'll get housing benefit and income support. But surely it's there as a safety net, and you should already have, um, you know, got to the point where you could afford to have children before you... It's a big decision having children. This is the main reason the Child Support Agency was brought into being, to manage and even encourage the disastrous choices that women are making. Now women can rest assured that when their entirely selfish attitude has landed them with a child they can't afford, the state will be there to extract money from whichever man she's chosen to enslave. My sister had a baby, and I wanted a baby of my own. He didn't know that I was planning to have a baby with him. Um, I told him I was on a pill, so he didn't know nothing about it. Courtney's plan worked, and soon she was expecting. Women have children when it suits them. That I am pregnant, that I'm keeping this baby, and that it's yours. They have abortions when it suits them. It wasn't a miscarriage. It was an abortion. They smoke, drink and take drugs while pregnant if it suits them. 
Oh, Meg, you're pregnant. No kidding. I didn't ask to be. Oh, you weren't there when it happened? This is none of your business. Look, you want to piss your life away, fine. But your kid deserves a chance. I think you're mixing me up with someone who gives a damn. Now, each year in Britain, thousands of drug users become pregnant and often the child ends up being removed from the mother. Now, a new scheme in Sheffield is giving more help to pregnant drug users with the aim of keeping the mother and child together. It doesn't take long to get an answer. Baby David is suffering from withdrawal. But you mustn't see this as a failure, because it's not. Because you did really, really well during your pregnancy. Pregnant mothers can cause irreparable harm to their unborn child by drinking alcohol. Figures show that one in every 100 children born is suffering from alcohol-related brain damage caused by their mother's drinking. Well, Tracy Hayter here knows all about that. She says she ruined her son's life because she continued drinking alcohol during pregnancy. Were you aware at all that drinking alcohol whilst pregnant wasn't a good idea? Yes, I was aware. Um, I didn't really know to what extent, um, you know, the foetus could be damaged. I knew that it could cause physical problems. I just didn't occur to me that it would cause brain damage. Um, <laughs> don't know what else to say at the moment. <laughs> How can it be illegal to smoke in pubs because of the damage to the health of strangers? But it's not illegal for a pregnant woman to smoke, despite the damage to the unborn child. When women do these things, they quite clearly meet the criteria for criminal child abuse. Society frowns on them, but does nothing else. Where we would simply arrest men and lock them up, we merely shake our heads at female misbehaviour.